Today we're heading to Wilds of Alderaan Standard to see just how many Thopter tokens we can make with the help of Pianolar. So here is our Naya PNLR tokens deck, which I think is my current favorite deck in standard. This deck is just so much fun to play. So let's talk about what it's trying to do. Jump into some games, see this wild pile in action. So we are built around Aftermath Pia, PNLR Console of Revival. So two mana, two, three. It's a legendary human artificer. Gives Thopters we control haste. And then the big deal is whenever we play a land from exile or cast a spell from exile, we make a one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying. So the main goal of our deck is to stick Pia and then play a ton of impulse draw effects. We are playing technically 13 impulse draw effects. We have Ren's Resolve, Reckless Impulse, Questing Druid, all essentially the same card. Questing Druid, a bit of a twist since it's an adventure card, but they exile two cards and we can play them this turn or until the end of our next turn. And then Mishra's Research Desk, just a one of, but kind of does the same thing. So these cards not only keep us churning through our deck, they're also a card draw effect that doesn't care about Shieldred, which is nice. But most importantly, these are putting a ton of playable cards in exile to make a ton of Thopters with PNLR. So PNLR is really unique in this deck in that it's a two drop that we do occasionally run out on turn two, but it's actually much better on like turn four or turn six when we have a few cards in exile from all these impulse draw effects and we play PNLR and make a land drop and cast a couple spells and immediately make like three or four Thopter tokens with haste. Then we have our big finisher. So making a bunch of one one Thopters is nice, but it's hard to close out the game with one ones, even if they're hasty. So we have two cards that can pump our Thopters. One is Wedding Announcement, which just makes tokens, eventually flips into an Anthem, maybe draws us some cards. The big one though is Virtue of Loyalty. This is really the big finisher in the deck. So Virtue of Loyalty can make a 2-2 Night token for two mana instant speed. More importantly, we can play it from Exile as an adventure, and we get an enchantment that on our end step puts a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control and untaps those creatures. So the idea is we make some Thopters, maybe some wedding announcement tokens and then all of a sudden we drop virtue of loyalty and those one ones are suddenly two twos and then three threes and then four fours and they close out the game super quickly otherwise we got a couple of other creatures monastery swift here just takes advantage of the fact that we're casting a lot of spells often hitting for three or four damage voldar and thrill seeker just a one of but once you see this deck in action these one also make a lot of sense we see a ridiculous number of cards with this deck it is not uncommon that by the time the game ends we have like 10 15 cards left in our library so even though thrill seeker is just a one of we're probably going to find it eventually and it's a nice way to close out games with direct damage especially with questing druid we can cast some spells grow the questing druid voldar and thrill seeker it sack the uh, questing druid for like 10 damage or something kill our opponent by surprise otherwise we got a bunch of random removal effects wandering emperor chandra hope speaking chandra is another one of but it's actually kind of absurd with this deck because we can play it plus to it to make two mana and then cast like a reckless impulse or a ren's resolve to exile four cards to play next turn light up the night just combos with chandra another way we can kill our opponent by surprise a bunch of creature removal voldir and thrill seeker also removal as far as the mana base pretty typical stuff got some creature lands a triome and a bunch of mana fixing in the sideboard we get a bunch of removal customization agatha soul calder and mostly graveyard hate in this deck with the upside that it can grow our creatures and then for more controlling matchups invasion of Gabicon, some more planeswalkers moonbringer valkyrie as a baneslayer angel against aggro decks and that is naya pia tokens probably the most fun deck to play in current standard. That's our deck for today. Let's jump into some games and see just how many Thopters we can make with PNLR. Thanks for watching everyone, enjoy the gameplay, and I'll be back in a bit for the wrap up. Need some magic cards? Well, you can snag them from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. Much brew about other time. We are playing some Naya Pia tokens in new standard and well, no Pia, but we got card draw. We make a bunch of tokens. Hand's fine. I mean, hopefully we reckless impulse into the Pia eventually. Pia is the card that makes our world go round with this deck. See what our opponent's up to. Frost, that sounds like a blue control player's name. Yeah, perhaps not incorrect. Pass and questing druid. Hopefully it hits us a land or we're gonna be a little sad. Okay, opponent. Well, we gotta be aggro. Questing Druid. All right, so we find a land and a wedding announcement. That is perfectly acceptable. We will play them both. Pass the turn. So we know our opponent's gonna be working on Atroxas. They could have Farewells. Hmm. All right, but say choose the wedding announcement. Sure. I mean, that's fine. We get, we get a free land. 
So play the land. We could just Swift Spear wedding announcement draw. That might be our best plan. Yeah, let's play Swift Spear. Play wedding announcement. Down to 17, draw a card, end step. All right, there's the Pia. There is the Pia, opponent planes. We don't currently have an Atroxa answer. Luca. Oh, our opponent's playing the Cascade deck, I see. Opponent gonna make a Toxic Beast. Well, we untap. So play Pia. Play Questing Druid, make a Thopter. Bargain the Torch to kill the Beast. Yeah, we'll keep a Swift Spear, and wow, opponent scoops it up. Uh, so this deck, if you haven't seen this deck, our opponent's deck is very scary. It's essentially Cascade combo, but in standard. So it plays nothing that costs less than four mana, technically, except for Bramble Familiar, with the idea being you Invasion of Alara, hit the Bramble Familiar, cast the spell side, and then hopefully immediately flip the Bramble Familiar. So that's what we're fighting against. How do we stop that with our deck is the question. How do we stop it? Curse of Silence, Invasion of Gabacon. Our best plan is probably to be aggro. Our opponent's deck is kind of slow. So in theory, maybe we just kill them before they do their big thing? I think that's the goal anyway. Whether or not that's actually gonna, actually gonna work out in practice, we'll see. Maybe we get on the Wandering Emperor. I feel like, so the Cascade deck's very scary. I've been messing around with it a little bit. It's really good if you don't run into interaction. Like if there's no counters or anything, the deck feels busted. And our deck doesn't really play interaction. I think we mulligan this, that's a lot of lands. All right, well, maybe the wedding announcement to the bottom. So how do we sequence this? So turn one, we do nothing. Turn two, we Questing Druid into Pia. You know what? I actually think we put a land to the bottom. It's a little greedy, but we're on the draw. I think that's fine. Between Questing Druid and Ren's Resolve, we should hit our lands. And wedding announcement is good. Cascade us if you can. And we draw the land anyway, so Razor Verge, they get go. Opponent, tap land. Another wedding announcement. Well, copper line, George, and go. We'll just uh, seek the beast. Would love to hit a land. That would be the best. Uh, opponent. Well, let's seek the beast. Now we hit a land and a torch the tower that doesn't do much. Well, in that case, I think we just Rockfall Veil wedding announcement. Is this Besage you again? All right, sure. I mean. We don't mind getting ramped. We are not pressuring our opponent much though, which is a problem. We're gonna have to get the clock going because we know our opponent's late game is ridiculous. Opponent passes. Well, how do we do this? All right, let's just, let's just do it this way. Questing Druid, wedding announcement. Kogla and Yadaro, okay. That blows up the wedding announcement. Virtue kills the Questing Druid, and Bramble Familiar, and a tap land. Well, play the, play the Swift Spear, play the Reckless Impulse. Play Pia, play a land, make a Thopter, go attacking. I mean, we got a Chandra for next turn. Is there a next turn? That's the real question. Opponent's up to six mana. I mean, our opponent can also just hard cast their big things. That is also a, a legitimate possibility here. Cemetery Desecrator. All right, so we're gonna exile something to kill the Pia. Yep. And a tap land. Oh, play Chandra. Take it up for mana. Double Ren's Resolve. Play the land, pass the turn. All right, how about no whammy? No whammy. No Italian, no Atroxa, none of that. We'd like the Chandra to live to double another Reckless Impulse, but we'll see. All right, another Cemetery Desecrator. What's the biggest thing in the graveyard, though? Just a wedding announcement? Okay, kills the Swifts. Wow, Chandra's gonna live. Chandra is going to live. That's good news. Okay, 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 okay. Well, let's start with Reckless Impulse. Draw four. Take up Chandra. 
play a questing druid. Play the land. Torch the bramble familiar. Play the wedding announcement. And now we have the option to virtue. Well, okay. Double seek the beast. Grow the questing druid. Oh my god, that's late up the night. This feels bad, but we're actually going to double chump because we would like to keep the Chandra one more turn. Herd migration. Okay. Can we can we kill our opponent with this late up the night? Is that possible? So Chandra goes to one. Plays the land. Okay, we got to think about this. So eight, nine, ten. So we can 20 our opponent, but not actually win. Play the questing druid. Play the Ren's resolve. Draw four. Play the land. Tick up Chandra for mana. Invasion of Gabacon. Slow down that Atroxa. Light up the night just to get it out of our hand. Yeah, just to get it out of our hand and to grow the, the Druid. Virtue of loyalty. Make a token. Opponent. Oh boy, here goes the Invasion of Alara trick. Let's see how good it is. So Invasion of Alara, gonna hit Bramble Familiar. That's a, the only possibility. So then our opponent gets to Bramble Familiar. They've already played two Cemetery Desecrators. Looks like an Itali. So the opponent gets an Itali. Itali finds another Bramble Familiar and a Ren's Resolve. So opponent gets to do it again. Well, we're seeing the Cascade thing. Opponent mills, 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 mills. Trample and Haster fights. It's gonna fight the Druid. Okay. Opponent goes to combat. Opponent gonna attack the Chandra. Well, we can double Virtue of Loyalty. Opponent has a go for the throw. Well, looks like Chandra's dead. Uh, and our opponent has a really big scary board. Well, Reckless Impulse. Pia. Well, virtual loyalty. Go. Oh, I guess we should have got in for one. Well, let's see. They can't play a Troxa. They can't flip a Tally. Okay, they're going to play a Virtue. That's a problem for the future, for sure. There's another Tally in the graveyard. Opponents at 23. Is there some way we can win? So if this flips, how bad is it? So if this flips, opponent draws two. Put an artifact card from your hand onto the battlefield. Create a token this copy card. Permanent you control three counters. Oh yeah, that's that's very bad. Very, very bad. And do we have any destroy evils left? One? We only have 19 cards left. Because destroy evil could get rid of this virtue. Uh, one, two, three, four. Well, I guess it's going to flip either way, isn't it? Yeah, I think we're in trouble. This late game is where the Cascade deck is kind of unbeatable. So we kill the Itali for now. Opponent hits this to three, but then this dies. So they can exile something from the graveyard to flip the battle. Oh, they're going to kill the Pia. Okay. Opponent kills the Pia. I mean, that probably still means we're dead here because I get to start reanimating stuff. We definitely don't have lethal. Well, play the wedding announcement. Virtue of loyalty number two. Sundown Pass. Play the Invasion of Gabacon. Yeah, let's just Virtual Loyalty. End of turn. Grow the Dorks. I mean, our board is impressive, but our opponent's going off with this Virtue. So they get to get a Tally at a minimum? Gonna go for Cemetery Desecrator. Alright, so opponent's gonna flip their thing. All right, they exile the Flesh Gorger. Okay, sack this. Uh, oh my god, they draw another Invasion of Alara. Okay. Wait, they milled themselves out. Do they not have it? Maramble Familiar. You're going to mill yourself out. You're going to mill yourself... Oh, they don't mill themselves out? Lightline Binding. Okay. This has been a wild game. Another Bramble Familiar. 
This has been a wild game. We draw nothing, unfortunately. We attack with everything. We can fire up the creature land. Opponent has four blockers. They block, 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 block. They take six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Oh, wait, is there a way this can work? All right, one, two, three. Fire up the creature land. One, two, three. Counters on the Thopter. An opponent scoops it up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. That was one of the wildest games of standard. So do we actually have lethal? So we go to combat, we attack. This puts a counter on this. So this hits for nine. So our opponent's down to 14. They can block, 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 but they're taking at least four. So that would put them down to 10. And then we can sack this for eight, nine, 10, 11. Wow. So we had like exa almost exactly lethal thanks to the one of Voldir and Thrillseeker. Yeah, that it might look like a strange one of, but this is like exactly the situation where Thrillseeker just saves our butt. Our opponent's going off. I will say, I do wonder if, so the main synergy of this Cascade deck is you're trying to use Cemetery Desecrator to flip the Invasion of Alara's. We never saw an Invasion of Alara flip. Our opponent, I guess they really had to kill the Pia. They probably had to try to kill the Thopter. I do wonder though, like the thing is, if you think about this, read Invasion of Alara, target player draws two cards. You can put an artifact from your hand on the battlefield, create a token that's a copy of a permanent you control, distribute three plus one plus one encounters from a one, two or three creatures you control, destroy target permanent opponent controls. Unclear why our opponent would not just flip the Invasion of Alara. Because if you flip this, you get to kill our thing anyway with the last mode. Plus you get to like copy the desecrator to flip this or you could copy your leyline binding to kill something else so i'm pretty sure all this to say i think our opponent should have won that game if you decide to try this cascade deck remember flipping invasion of lara is kind of ridiculous uh so i think our opponent just probably just picked up the deck and is just learning it but really focus on flipping the invasions because it does everything desecrator does trying to kill a creature and like a million things more you still kill the same creature that Desecrator does if you target the creature, but you also draw two cards and kill something else by copying one of your permanents, and like you just get such a ridiculous amount of value. So wow, that was a wild game, though. We'll take it. Ooh, okay. We have Naya lands. We have Pia. We can make tokens, and we get to draw a bunch of cards. Uh, Sand is essentially ideal, very close to ideal. Opponent, Schwamp. And let's just Copperline Gorge and go. The question's gonna be. Do we want a questing druid this turn or do we wait? I think we wait. Let's let's just make a 2-2. Mono black. This is a, a throwback to pre-Wilds of Eldrain standard. Oh, I'm worried about missing a land next turn. That would be awkward. This is so high upside though. All right, well, let's wedding announcement. I mean, so next turn. Cut down, sure. Next turn we get to see three cards. If we low roll and don't hit a land, then I guess that's just sad. Frexine Arena. All right, we do hit a land, so that's not gonna be a problem. Reckless Impulse. Play Overgrown Farmland. Get in for one. Pass the turn. And now we can Questing Druid end step, untap and hopefully have a big Pia turn. And our wedding announcement's gonna flip. Do you have Shieldred? Sheltered, like, isn't the end of the world here. I am so happy Invoke Despair's gone. Evolve Sleeper. It's funny, against this deck, Mono Black kind of just feels fair. It feels, not that it's bad, like, Black's still the best color in standard, I think, but it feels very fair compared to what we're doing. Draw a couple cards for next turn. Wedding Announcement in Bivouac. It's actually very awkward. Uh, we don't really want to lose a Wedding Announcement, so let's, okay. Play the Wedding Announcement. I guess we're just on the Wedding Announcement plan for now. So much for this, we're gonna get a bunch of value out of Pia. The nice thing about Pia is, and one of the things that makes it unique, is it's a two drop that is actually even better in the late game. Like in the late game, we flipped a wedding announcement. So now our Thopters are two twos. We're gonna have a bunch of mana, so we can make a bunch of Thopters the turn that Pia comes down. So it's the rare two drop that I mean, honestly, we're okay with running it out on turn two, but we're also like just as happy playing it in the late game when we have a bunch of mana. And we have a shoulder dancer now, which is nice. Or maybe a Frexian Arena answer, we'll see. Gix's command. 
All right, well, there goes our tokens for the time being. Pound it hits us down to 15. I feel like we should kill this Evolve Sleeper. We're gonna make a token. Pass the turn. So we can, we can kill the Evolve Sleeper. Questing Druid, to exile some cards for next turn. Yeah, let's just kill it. Uh, blow up the Valve Sleeper. Opponent. All right, there's the Shieldred, sure. We're at 15 though, so we're not in danger of just dying. We are gonna need to find an answer for it, but uh, all right, Seek the Beast. Draw a couple cards, but not really as far as Shieldred's concerned. That's part of the power of this deck is we draw a ton of cards, but it doesn't actually involve getting hit by Shieldred. Pia. All right, so one, two, one, two. Can't quite do everything. So I think we play Pia. Play the land, trigger Pia. Play the wedding announcement, trigger both. Hit you with the questing druid. Opponent down, wow, takes it to 15, okay. I mean, I guess I get to gain back a bunch of life. One of the nice things is we have flipped two wedding announcements, so our creatures are big enough they don't get got by Gix's command anymore. Well, opponent needs a sweeper, I think. Even at 18, they are in danger of just dying this turn. And we have a backup Pia. I mean, it is 2023, so they could have enchantment removal. It's not impossible. Like, enchantment removal into Gix's command would be, that would be a blowout. All right, Graveyard Trespasser, sure. I mean, our tokens are as big as Graveyard Trespasser at this point, so that is not an actual concern. A Valve Sleeper. Our tokens are bigger than that. And this is without the virtue. Can we just straight up kill our opponent this turn is the question. Passing. Okay, so we get drain, sure. Well, questing druid. Ren's resolve, draw some cards, grow the druids. I mean, we just go so wide compared to these black decks. They even had the sweep with the Gix's command. Reckless impulse. Trigger our stuff, draw some cards. Wow, we did not hit a land, that's awkward. So if we attack with everything, this gets blocked, this gets blocked, this gets blocked. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. So it's not lethal. Actually, yeah, let's let's just Thopter attack. We have enough blockers. So we are gonna take an extra damage from the Shieldred because we're gonna draw a card with the wedding announcement, but I feel like we have enough defense here that that's fine. Opponent. All right, down to seven. This is basically it. Opponent's gonna gain four because of the Frexine Arena. Ooh, light up the night. We drop to eight, we drop to six. So our opponent needs to find a way to kill us or blow up our board this turn. Seems like it should be challenging, but then kill the Pia, but that doesn't really matter because we have another one. Plus, I mean, that's the thing about Pia is it's kind of done its job. Like Pia, just by sitting out as a two drop, has already made 12 power of hasty flyers, which is kind of ridiculous. I mean, the wedding announcements are helping, obviously, but still, like, that's the power of Pia. It is a two drop that's fine on turn two and absurd in the late game. Cruelty of Gix. I don't think that's gonna do it. Opponent's gonna tutor. They only have three mana though. Is there actually a three mana play that saves them? Toxic Deluge. <laughs> Bantu's Last Reckoning. I can't think of one that's in standard that would be in their deck, but I guess we'll see. Opponent goes to seven. I mean, they literally need to win the game or kill us. I mean, there is no, all right, opponent passes. I mean, there is no next turn for our opponent. We draw a land, we get drained down to six, but I mean, we just, Ren's Resolve. We just make so many Thopters. Is there really a card that stops this? That might've been what they tutored for, but it's not gonna actually matter here. Plus we still have another P anyway. Uh, well, play Pia. <laughs> land from Exile, make a three, three and wedding announcement, make a 3-3, three, three. and questing druid, make a 3-3, three, three. and uh, yeah, I mean, Pia, it's a pretty good magic card. I mean, our opponent's playing what was the best deck in standard, or one of the best decks in standard, and it just can't keep up with what we're doing. I mean, I guess we did also draw every wedding announcement, but we did draw half of our deck. I do not think you can block your way out of this opponent. Seems unlikely. <laughs> yeah. And opponent, uh, slightly dead to the thopping. <laughs>
<laughs> I mean, those are those are the best games for this deck. Like that was not a case where our opponent had like some bad draw or something, and we just took advantage of the fact that they weren't running well. They had a fine draw. We just kind of crushed them because we can go really wide, really fast. Uh, what do we want to change, if anything? Could bring in the lore. Lauren to get rid of Frexian Arena, I guess. Could bring in another Torch the Tower, maybe. Could see another Chandra or Jaya. They seem good against our opponent's deck. Let's try Jaya. Down a Mishra's Research Desk. Yeah, let's just run it like that. That's fine. I mean, this is, I think, what our deck is built for. I think our deck is its best matchup. I believe it's just designed to make the black decks look silly. Because the black decks, if you think about it, the black decks are based around solid threats like Shieldred and Graveyard Trespasser. Uh, so solid threats and then the best one for one removal in the format. The go for the throats, the cut downs, just the most efficient kill your thing cards. The problem that black decks have against our deck is one for one removal is not very good because our deck is built around a bunch of cards that are putting multiple, multiple bodies on the battlefield. So it makes all the go for the throats and so forth look kind of silly. Well, Destroy Evil is a good draw. This hand is interesting. Oh, but it's Swamp and Passes. Well, let's Copperline Gorge and... Yeah, let's just Gobbicon. Maybe slow down a Graveyard Trespasser or something. Frexian Arena, Frexian Flesh Gorger. Two Shieldreds and a Graveyard Trespasser. Well, I guess we take the Frexian Arena. I'm actually a little scared of, of this hand. Flesh Gorger, I assume? Flesh Gorger. We draw Chandra. Well, we will. Uh, opponent doesn't currently have removal. Yeah, let's just Reckless Impulse. We need to start making bodies. Yeah, play Carpoosin for us. Play the Swift Spear. Take one. Pass the turn. I mean, they do need to keep us from flipping Gobicon, right? Ooh, another Flesh Gorger. Um, play the land. I think we play Distraction Jaya here. This theoretically makes our opponent send both of their creatures at the Jaya. So it's kind of just fogging for a turn is the hope. All right, gonna go for the throat, the swift spear. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we will reckless impulse. Draw a couple cards. Ugh, not very good cards. Do we just play the Pia and pass? We know our opponent's hand mostly. Yeah, let's play the Pia. We're kind of just trying to set up for the future. Oh, all right, we will see. We're kind of getting flesh gorged. I mean, our opponent's probably gonna want to get down Shieldred, right? I assume. The opponent hits us to 10. We can kill the Shieldred. All right, they go with a Valve Sleeper and a Graveyard Trespasser. We will light up the night to kill the Evolve Sleeper, Megathopter. Seek the Beast. Oh, we hit a land, but it's tapped. Play the tap land, Megathopter. Go to combat. Play the Gabacon. Megathopter. Pass the turn. This one's gonna be close. So we have a way to protect our team, which is nice. We're not gonna die to the Shieldreds, which is also nice. We might be okay, even though our opponent's up to 36. Opponent with the big attack. Exiles to drain. Yeah, let's sack it now to make sure it works. Okay, so that works. So now we're safe to do some blocking. I mean, I think we get to clean our opponent's board here. So we block here. Block here, block here, block here. And then the Graveyard Trespasser with Bargain. Sack the Thopter. Wedding announcement, unfortunately. Land, actually, let's keep that to the top because we do have the Chandra. So I think we've successfully wrapped the board. We're still at eight. Opponent plays Shielder number one. Well. Destroy the Shieldred. We draw the land. We play the land. Play the Questing Druid. 
Get in with everything except Pia. Pia blocks the Mishra's foundry. Well, we gotta deal a lot of damage. Our opponent is at, was over 40 thanks to those. <laughs> thanks to those of Elf Sleepers, but we do have a Chandra coming. All right, there goes the Pia, sure. Go, go, Chandra hopes be again. A bonus passes. Play Chandra. Take up. Look for a Ren's Resolve or something. Okay, we have some options. Yeah, Chandra works really well with Adventures because it sees the Adventure side. Opponent gonna level up. So we have Shieldred covered. All right, there's the Shieldred, yep. Opponent passes. So I think we actually do this now because we want to double it. One, two, three, four. Destroy evil, the Shieldred. Draw a land. Ren's Resolve, draw some cards for next turn. Take up Chandra for mana. Wow, when this deck goes off, it is pretty spectacular. Ren's Resolve, draw some cards for next turn. Monastery Swift Spear. Restless Bivouac, smack you for 12? We also have Light Up the Night Chandra too, with Flashback, which can be a lot of damage. Wow, Pona got off to a good start too. If we're beating this Mono Black hand, we're just always beating Mono Black for Xing Arena. Yeah, I mean, we are just drawing way more. Pony has 46 cards in our deck, we have 25. It is absolutely absurd how many cards this deck sees. Pony passes, Questing Druid, well let's, Tick up, Reckless Impulse, play Reckless Impulse. Draw a few million cards. Play Battlefield Forge, play, I guess we could have played this first, play Questing Druid. Ren's Resolve, are we gonna mill ourselves out? Where's our Pia's? Virtue, hit ya a bit. Questing Druid's up to a 992. Bone it down to 18, and uh, we're back to the point where I think our opponent needs a card that may not exist to get out of this. I guess the Gix's Command, Gix's Command is actually pretty good. Although then I think Chandra Light Up the Night gets him. She old rid, okay. Good magic card. Well, uh, let's double up a Virtual Loyalty. And then get drained. And now I think we just win a, with the one of Light Up the Night. We can take this up for mana. Flashback the Light Up the Night, targeting your face. X10, uh, X9. Remove nine counters from Chandra in GG. And I think that is about like, I don't know, opponent got up to 40 life. I don't know what else our opponent's deck could really want. Like, that they got up to 40 life they got us down to eight before we stabilized that was pretty good outside of like a sweeper i guess like uh, i just i don't know if black can consistently beat our deck it feels if you're worried about losing to the shielder decks and the grindy black decks this has got to be one of the best one of the best options in the format because it's kind of a joke like pony had shielder heads flesh gorgers got up to 40. it doesn't matter like here's here's the difference 44 cards in our opponent's deck 12 cards in our deck and it's not like we're it's not like we're aggressively self milling i guess we did activate chandra twice so that's like so that's like uh 10 cards but even if you discount that 22 cards in our deck we still drew like 20 more cards than our opponent and that's that's the difference we just see so many cards and we do it in a way that shoulder does not interact with us so yeah i mean this deck's sweet this deck's really sweet it's still one of my favorite decks to play in standard but that's something to talk about in the wrap up well, we don't have any card draw, which is awkward, but we're on the play. We have Gabacon or Virtue on two. Or Ren's Resolve. Um, we could Ren's Resolve. We can Ren's Resolve next turn, though, if we need to. What if we don't hit a land? Yeah, let's just Gabacon. Well, I guess Glissa is the most annoying card, because we don't actually have a clean removal spell for that. We don't want that to start drawing a card every turn. That would... <laughs> Let our opponent keep up with our card draw opponent. Passes, ooh, we do hit a land. Well, in that case, new plan, uh, wedding announcement. Uh, opponent questing druid, land and land, okay, sure. 
but we make a dork. So opponent's playing Jund Adventures, Jund Midrange. One of the things that's nice about Wilds of Eldraine that we've seen is, yes, black is still one of the most, I think it still is the most played color, but we have seen a shift in what black decks people are playing. It's not all Demir and Mono Black anymore, which is something at least. Ren's Resolve. Play Copperline Gorge. Pass the turn. Opponent's going to cash in a blood. Yeah, I mean, I guess using Blood Tide to kill a 1-1 one -one is not all that appealing. Well, they're going to get to this Glissa eventually, but we should have a board by then. We could really use a Pia. That's kind of the last missing piece of the puzzle. Opponent going to pass. Well, we draw. Get drained. Play Reckless Impulse. Play a Swift Spear. Pass the turn. We did miss our land drop, which isn't great. We could have Ren's Resolve to try to hit the land, but then we're going to start wasting stuff. All right, there's a Questing Druid. We need to find an answer to this Shieldra. That's the the next piece of the puzzle. Ugh. All right, Double Obnixilis is also not great here. We really got to find a way to kill the Shieldra. It's opponent, two Obnixiluses. Yeah, that's, that's not good. That's not good. I imagine they got to make Devils. They do have to be a little concerned of us. Sure, we'll take the two. They do have to be aware of us flipping this Gabacon, right? That's still got to be a concern for our opponent. I think we can do it if we want to. Although, it is going to require some not great attacks. But if we can hit a way to kill Shieldra, then life becomes very good. Uh, well, we will draw. It's a mountain. We get drained. Play the Swift Spear. Play the Ren's Resolve. Take one. I'll play them out in everything at the Gabacon. Opponent's gonna let it go. So we flip the Gabacon. Torch questing druid. Grow the team. Well, we'll see. There's still a shielder that we cannot currently easily kill. If it attacks, we might be able to get it with with this Wandering Emperor. Down to seven, down to five. Yeah, Shielder just kind of going off. Opponent runs out a Glissa. Okay. Well, we draw. Yo, thank goodness. Okay, there's the Destroy Evil. That's, that is big, 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 big. Play Bivouac. This gives us a shot at least. Destroy Evil the Shieldred. Actually, is that too much? We can discard a card, right? Let's think about this. We have to kill at least one of them. There is a Glissa. So, okay, let's attack Ob, attack Ob. Those get blocked. Attack Ob, attack Ob. We can also sack this Light Shield Array if we need to, if our opponent blocks with a Glissa. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good enough reason to sack it, to get rid of Glissa. This doesn't really change things, though. Kill one of our things. They scry to the top. They lose the Glissa. They lose the Big Ob. And we pass the Tur. We are at four, though, which means if they find another Shieldred... Oh, my God. Okay, they do find another Shieldred. We're going to discard... Actually, one, two, three, four. This go for the throat, I think, beats us here. We get drained. It's a land. Ugh. So what we need to do is back up the Swift Spear to kill the Shieldred, but our opponent has go for the throw, so it doesn't actually work. I mean, we can we can try it. Maybe our opponent won't realize what we're doing. Uh, target Swift Spear. Uh, and all the tokens in the world <laughs> still die to Shieldred. I think we actually just run it back. I mean, I guess we could bring in Chandra. Really, the problem there, the problem there was actually the double ob. That's what got us there. The double ob was was an issue. Thrill Seeker seems a little sketch. Maybe we actually just go towards the tower. That was the problem. We ended up taking like eight damage from those two obs, and that allowed Shieldred to actually close out the game. Shieldred by itself, I don't think is actually that big of a problem for us. We have answers for it. We don't really draw extra cards, so it's kind of just like getting chump locked and doing two a turn. So Shieldred itself equals not shook. Shieldred at a low life total because we took infinite off of Ob's. That's a, that's a different story. Yeah, Ob has gotten a lot better with this new set. Well, 
So this is the kind of hand we want. Hopefully it's good enough. We'll see. We actually got the P of this time, which is nice. We do not have a shouldered answer, which is not as nice, but well, Jetmere's Gardens, go. We'll see. P is better hmm, on turn three, probably. Bona plays the tap land. Well, we will play a copper line Georg, and I think we'll just pass in questing druid. Bona tap land. Well, all right. Seek the beast. Draw a couple cards. Torch. Oh, and destroy evil. That is about as sad as that pile can be, honestly. Uh, well, play the land. Play a questing druid. Play a swift spear. Yeah, that's actually kind of a disastrous questing druid not only do we not draw any cards we lost two cards that we really wanted access to opponent plays a glissa well we will play the land and this time we actually are going to focus on wandering emperor here oh, about it the rest well we will play the wandering emperor although losing this ren's resolve is actually annoying oh i really wish we hadn't lost those two removal spells there goes our card draw we have a lot of ren's resolves in our deck hopefully we draw some take down wandering ember play the land now we're kind of flooding this glissa is just a problem yeah let's take down make a token opponent going to seek the beast oh see that's the seek the beast we wanted was cards we could play opponent they get to draw cards with their Seek the Beast. Only one, but still. And there's a Questing Druid. Oh, man, it passes. Well, Nahiri's Warcrafting's not bad. Let's get rid of this Glissa. Get some triggers. Virtue of Loyalty. Make a Knight. Take up the Wandering Emperor. And while we might just be overwhelming our opponent fairly here, I mean, this is a pretty big attack. Opponent's down to six. We're gonna play the land. If we draw land, we can pee a virtue next turn and uh, get a thopter and just make the team huge. We might not even need it though. See, this is where, like, children, go for it. <laughs> like, you can do it. All right, that went, that went much, much better. Even with the kind of clunky, I will say questing druid, it's really good in this deck, but as far as, as far as being a reckless impulse effect, it definitely is the sketchiest of the bunch. So Gliss is annoying. Shieldred's a thing. We could bring in Chandra, it's just so expensive. Maybe Jaya, let's try Jaya. The upside of Jaya is it makes a token every turn. So it can jump block Glissa forever and it might be removal. On a game three, Pia tokens versus Jund, Jund them out. Yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, let's play Bivouac. This hand doesn't immediately do anything, but we got a bunch of card draw, which is nice. Blood Tithe Havista. Well, play a Battlefield Fjorge. Probably mostly scared of our opponent just cashing this in for double ob. That would be annoying. Uh, opponent goes to combat. Yeah, as a result, we're actually going to Virtue here and kill this. We don't care about the three. We do care about ob coming down. Two obs coming down. Uh, opponent has a Glissa. Well, that's not ideal. Uh, let's Reckless Impulse. Play a Sundown Pass. Play the Research Desk. Well, it looks like our opponent's going to get to draw cards. The problem with playing Wedding Announcement there is we play Wedding Announcement, our opponent kills the token, and then Glissa just accidentally kills the Wedding Announcement. So it looks like our opponent's going to get to draw a card for a minute. They can't really shoulder this turn, or we get to destroy evil. Second time we've lost to destroy evil that we really would like in our deck. Wow, okay. Obnixilis, not doubled. And ticks up. Well, we'll decline down to 15. We draw even more lands. Wow, this doesn't feel great. But I guess we can bivouac the Obnixilis? Yeah, this is... Uh, Obnixilis seems very good against us. That card is a problem. Remember when Obnixilis was, like, all hyped to be one of the best cards ever, and then it never did anything? Well, now it's back, and now we are getting absolutely destroyed by Jund. Our opponent, this feels like kind of like a modern Jund deck. Our opponent's just playing all the, all the good cards they can, and it is working out. Glissa such a such an annoyance the opponent draws an extra card uh, Nixilis gonna tick up down to 10 plays Besaju and there's also Shieldred all right so life is getting worse by the by the second oh we draw it's oh my god I mean we've also run pretty poorly here we've drawn a ridiculous number of lands 
Yeah, I think we are officially dead now. <sighs> Take a swift spear. Play a swift spear. Play a land. Play a wedding announcement. Pass the turn. Yeah, I mean, we've also drawn a lot of lands and no Pia. I think you, you've probably seen our games. The games where we find Pia go a lot differently than the games where we don't find Pia. Pia really is the centerpiece of this archetype. When we don't have it, things go much worse. I mean, we're dead to like anything here. They even have the creature land they can fire up. Okay, I'm gonna discard a land. This is bad in a whole bunch of ways. And now we need like, I don't even know. I don't even know what we can draw to get out of this. Probably starts with a Reckless Impulse effect, but even that, like, it's hard to, can, like, Reckless Impulse into Pia plus a way to kill Sheoldred or something. Like, in theory, that gives us some ch small chance. So, all that to say, we need our opponent to have nothing, and we need to get super lucky. Destroy Evil. Well, Destroy Evil is a way to kill Sheoldred. That's good, but we're so far behind, I don't think it's enough. Especially with this creature land over there. Well, play the Sundown Pass, pass the turn. Mega Token. Opponent Cycles. Sure. Yeah, she altered still very good. Oh, hand a cut down. Yeah, now we're just super dead. Well, I guess our deck is beatable. <laughs> she old red. This deck is just so fun to play and it has no black cards, which is <laughs> refreshing in our current standard when so many decks are <sighs> black. But I think this deck might be legit and I am excited for anything that is just different doing well in standard. And this hand, eh, this hand's fine. Restless Bivouac, little, little obnoxious, but we can't, wow, opponent's doing some malignant. We may get work. The question's gonna be, do we, well, we're on the draw, we'll see what we draw. We can Mountain Swift Spear, or in Bivouac Pass. What do you up to? Plaza of Heroes. You know what, I think we're gonna play the tap land. Since our opponent did some mulliganing, I think, I think it's fine to, Ugh, invasion of Gabacon. We do gotta make sure we hit our land drops. That is, that is the one important thing. Thankfully, we have two Ren's Resolves, essentially. Questing Druid and Ren's Resolve. So either way, we get to draw some cards next turn. So I think we're probably gonna wait till turn three to play Swift Spear, honestly. Wow, 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 wow. Well, in that case, I guess we play the Swift Spear and play another Bivouac and hit you for one. We would like to keep this from flipping. Hopefully our opponent doesn't have Rafine. Rafine would be Ada lean, okay. How do we deal with this Adalyn? Ugh, ugh, oh, this Adalyn could snowball us. We don't actually have a removal spell for it in the middle of my opponent combat. Attacks. Well, we get to, we get to virtual loyalty, make a token. Block and block. If we can put enough bodies on the bed, oh, we draw land, that's actually pretty big. Question is, what do we do with this questing druid? We could just run it out and start casting Ren's Resolves. That's probably, I think that's actually worth it here. So we're going to questing druid. Giving up some theoretical card draw, but we have double Ren's Resolve, so hopefully we don't need it. And I like just having as many blockers as possible. Destroy, wow, that is a nice pile for next turn. Pia into Destroy Evil is kind of the dream here. That actually is just a clean answer to Adeline. And once this Adeline dies, we should just be good, don't it? Combat attacks. Uh, well, block and block and block. If our opponent has some like removal blowout, whatever, like it, at this point it doesn't even matter. All right, go for the throw, kills the questing druid, sure. That is still fine, because we get to play a Pia and then destroy evil from exile, blow up the Adeline, make a Thopter, and now we should be good. Play the tap land, hit ya. Down to 14, and uh, virtual loyalty. Thalia, oh, opponent, really? Well, in that case, we have to Ren's Resolve. <laughs> Play a Copper Line, Yorge, make a Thopter down to 10 and pass the turn. What is our opponent playing? Five color legends? She Sheoldred, well, thankfully we have destroy evil, which will get rid of Sheoldred. 
and make a thopter and grow the swift speed. Pia is such a ridiculously good two drop. Why did we not realize how good Pia was before? Um, well, go to combat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we can't win this turn. Go to combat, attack with everything. Now we're just in close out the game mode. Now the Gabacon doesn't actually especially matter. Voldaren well, Thrill Seekers just a one up, but it's very, uh, very cute with questing druid. Uh, opponent, going to do some blocking, sure. Thalia down, and that means we get to also wedding announcement. And yeah, this one's looking, looking good, looking good. I think we got there. <laughs> Opponent. We're gonna flip your invasion. I mean, flipping invasion Apicon doesn't even matter at this point. It's just way too late. Okay, so now we gotta do it with our opponent being on the play. We know what our opponent's trying to do, which is be, what are they, five color legends? Gotta be five color legends, right? Maybe we bring in a Boonbringer Valkyrie. So spells getting attacked by Thalia, definitely obnoxious. We can go down. Invasion of Gabacon, maybe a research desk? Actually, maybe we don't Brothers at End. We saw what, Adeline Shieldred. Brothers at End doesn't get either of those. Do we want to, how many Valkyries do we want? Is Valkyrie even worth it? It's probably fine as a one of. Yeah, let's let's run it like that. Let's run it like, I mean, I imagine our opponent just has a ton of legends. They might even be Joda. It could be a Joda deck. I haven't seen Joda in a minute, but. On a game two, Naya Tokens, PNLR versus Something with a lot of legends. Oh, it'd be so sweet if this deck was like actually top tier. I would be so happy. The deck's like super fun to play and it's just not a Shieldred deck. It's very different than any deck we've had at the top of the meta. I think we keep. It's a fine hand, despite the tappedness. Thalia here's a little obnoxious because we can't torch it. Okay, Riveteer's Requisitioner. Well, in that case, I think we just, Jamir's Garden, go. Yeah, let's just pass, see what our opponent does. I don't think they're playing like sack effects or whatever. That would be, that would be surprising. Opponent combat. Take the three, see what our opponent does. Is this reanimator? What is going on? Opponent discards Crocs and Kunaros. Maybe this is reanimator. All right, well, I guess we are gonna torch. Get rid of the requisitioner. See what we draw here. Ren's Resolve. Play Swift Spear. Play Rock Valveil. Play Ren's Resolve. Trigger the Swift Spear. Was kind of hoping to hit a land, but hit it down to 17. Maybe we draw a land. If we draw a land, Pia into Reckless Impulse would be nice. That would be the optimal turn opponent. That is big. It's sushi. That's also pretty big. Not a land. Well, in that case, I guess we just got a reckless impulse to try to find a land. Okay, we hit the land. So Battlefield Forge, Virtue, no attacks. I am getting a little scared. Opponent is playing big things and we are not answering big things. Opponent combat gets and hits us. Shieldred, yup. Well, we will take our beats. Get drained, play a Pia. At least Pia gets to make Thopters that can block its sushi. Reckless Impulse, make a Thopter. Well, pass the turn. So it's not looking great though. Our opponent's actually in pretty good shape here. Shieldred's still good. <laughs> Who would have thought? Adeline, okay. Goes attacking. Makes a token, well, block and block. I mean, we can chump block all day. We do need to find a way to deal with a Shieldred though, or an Adeline, down to eight, dropping to six. We have like, full two turns maybe? Wedding announcement, that doesn't do it. So we drop to, oh, yeah. We drop to six, make a Thopter. Come on, way to kill Shieldred, please, please, please. Wedding announcement, Thrill Seeker, that's kind of a low roll. Uh, Reckless Impulse, trigger, trigger. Wow, we did not hit any land, so jeez. Oh boy. Well, yeah, that's not good. That is not good at all. Where's our lands? Four lands in 23 cards? That seems improbable. Opponent. Invoke justice. And counters. Yeah, we're just, we're dead now. All right. If our opponent makes it to the late game, they're gonna do big things. Uh, we learned that. Do we bring in Soul Cauldron? I think we bring in Soul Cauldron. Boombringer Valkyrie does seem okay. It does seem like our opponent does not have that much 
actual hard removal. So our opponent's just playing like a bunch of expensive, a bunch of expensive, expensive cards they're just it's like four drop mythics not deck not drawing lands was rough we are on the play for game three which is helpful that is that is a big deal i don't know what our last cut is i kind of do want to keep one boonbringer valkyrie i guess we are only playing 20 uh 21 lands but still four out of 37 or whatever or 27 whatever it was is kind of ridiculous 23 i mean we have all these reckless impulses which in theory should find us the lands what is our final cut here Chandra? Chandra can kill two things, though. You know what? Let's go down one Torch to the Tower. We might regret that. Torch to the Tower does snipe Thalia, which would be annoying. I do not know what our opponent's doing. We saw Riveteer's Requisition or two. There it is, all over the place. All right, good hand. All right, I mean, we're going to keep this. I don't know if this counts as good or not. So we have Turn to Virtue of Loyalty, probably into Wedding Announcement. We do have the Boonbringer Valkyrie. We'll see if it's actually good invasion of Gabacon. All right, let's see what our opponent takes. Actually, let's cast this now. We would prefer our opponent to take the virtue over the wedding announcement if we had a choice. All right, they take the wedding announcement. We draw a questing druid. Well, play the land. Get in, hit ya. Down to 18 past the turn. We might just questing druid here. Questing druid into virtual loyalty next turn, maybe? Requisitioner. Oh God, is our opponent missing lands? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, play the land. Play the questing druid. Get in with the knight. The opponent is gonna block. Gets a treasure. Well, pass the turn. Oh, that is a shielded answer down, unfortunately. Losing that. Oh, we'll see if that comes back to bite us. Losing the destroy evil might end up hurting. Opponent finds a land. Another invasion of Gabacon. I mean, all the Gabacons in the world don't matter if you can't flip them, though, right? Well, we'll make another token. Are we killing Questing Druid? All right, gonna cut down the Questing Druid, sure. I mean, we do get to play our wedding announcement now if we don't draw anything. Uh, we do not. Well, play the land, wedding announcement. Hit ya. Pass the turn. Well, go go virtual loyalty. Opponent, Thalia, and passes. Yeah, I mean, I think we just have to get down the virtual loyalty. It's it's too much value to pass up with wedding announcement. So start growing the team. Is our opponent playing Wraths? Drew and Hazaret. Who knows what that could find. Play a Bivouac, and I think we just passed the turn. Well, it's, guess it's all gonna come down to what this Drew and Hazaret hits. Opponent duresses. We'll play a Wandering Emperor. I mean, they know if they attack, we get to exile it. The moment of truth. How bad is it? Legend from the top six. Okay, just just an Atsushi, that's fine. I was afraid of Atroxa. Um, well, we are definitely getting rid of Jiren Hazaret. Do not want that triggering again. <laughs> All right, we can deal with an Itsushi. Like, we got virtual loyalty going off, so we're we're good, we're good. I don't even know if it's Sushi's anywhere near enough here. Are we worried about our opponent making a bunch of treasures? There's not a ton we can do about it. Let's tick up on the littlest token. Probably has to block with Thalia, right? Wow, gonna go to two. Ah, a Ganjo. All right, so not going all the way to two. All right, yep, yep, yep. So opponent goes to six, Itsushi dies. I expect our opponent's gonna make treasures, but we will see. I guess it depends on their hand. All right, gonna make some treasures. Well, let's, I think we actually just do this now, as awkward as that is. Seek the beast. Play the land. Play Pia. Questing Druid, make a Thopter. And virtual loyalty, going to do some work. Untap everything, counters on everything. Do we even care about Atroxa here? Like, let's say our opponent cashes in those treasures and plays Atroxa. Does it even matter? All right, a tally. Spin it to win it, spin it to win it. Opponent. Bitter Reunion. Our deck, destroy evil. All right, that can kill the Pia. I don't think that, I don't think that saves our opponent though, does it? Our board is pretty, wow, you're not killing the Pia? Okay, opponent's gonna kill her token has to cash in a treasure because of their own Thalia. 
Can't play the bitter reunion. Oh, that's definitely game. That is definitely game, because we just get to Boonbringer Valkyrie, an opponent, dun dun dun. Well, a tally, big and scary. Not as good as Pia, though. <laughs> Pia might just be one of the best cards in standard that no one knows about. <laughs> oh, this deck is so good. So good. Well, sweet, sweet. No card draw, but our deck is literally just, well, I guess wedding announcements kind of card draw, but our deck is literally stuffed full of card draws. So we should draw our Ren's Resolves and Reckless Impulses and so forth eventually. Well, Combra Language, go. Opponent, Seachrome Coast. Well, opponent going to make disappear well copper line gorge and wedding announcement Yo. opponent plays a land and passes well we will play a land play a pia get in for one pass the turn i don't know what our opponent's playing here passing well oh maybe our opponent's just full-on control I guess that's a possibility. Well, that's Reckless Impulse. Research Desk, Trigger Pia. Play the land, hit ya. Uh, okay. I guess we'll leave that on top. So hit you down to 60, pass the turn, draw a card. Do you have a Wrath? Okay, there's a Sunfall. So crack this for a land, hopefully. Huh, no land. Well, we'll take the Ren's Resolve. Ren's Resolve. Oh, whiff on lands. That is not good. Well, in that case, I guess we play a wedding announcement. Make a dork pass the turn. Yeah, that was not at all what we were hoping to draw. Opponent, Eternal Wanderer. Takes up to kill a token. Play Pia. Seek the beast. <sighs> Low rolling. Go to combat, hit the eternal wanderer. And pass the turn. Jeez. Yeah, that was a that was a pretty bad questing druid. Could not cast any of the cards. We twice in a row whiffed on hitting any lands there, which is brutal. Opponent. Horned lock whale, sure and snipes a token. Play Swift Spear. Destroy evil, get rid of the whale. Pay the ward. Hit our opponent, hit our opponent. Hit the Eternal Wanderer. Draw from wedding announcement. So opponent can't wrath with Eternal Wanderer. All right, gonna snipe the token. Plays a land, gains a life. Salistus, opponent passes. Questing Druid, make a Thopter. And opponent scoops it up and control, no problem that time. We we kind of crushed them. Well, let's bring in Evasion of Gabacon, bring in Chandra bringing Jaya, basically just try to get a, a little bit bigger. We don't have anything that's specifically, we're Naya, so we don't get counter spells or anything like that. So it's not like we're gonna win a counter war against our opponent's deck, but hopefully that doesn't matter. We can get a little bigger with our Planeswalkers. I mean, it worked that game. I think we just outdraw them. I think that's the, that's the hope because of all of our Ren's resolves and so forth. We can pressure and also just draw a ton of cards. Also really hilarious that the deck is so good at generating card advantage and none of it's actual card draw. So <laughs> it doesn't get got by Shieldred, which is super, super, super cute. Well, that's a zero lander. All right, we'll keep this. Well, that's a six, uh, five lander, but probably a bivouac to the bottom. I don't think we need two bivouacs. Opponent, tap land. Well, all right, we draw another land. Opponent passes. Well, play land and invasion of Gabacon. Yes. Opponent passes. Well, uh, reckless impulse. Play land. Pass the turn. Wow, opponent kept a two lander. All right, draws land number three. Well, play the land. Run out the virtue. Get a two two. Pass the turn. About it. 
Wow, are you killing the Tutu? They are. Wow. Spend an entire card to kill a Tutu. Adventures are so powerful in matchups like this. Just being two cards in one is very powerful. Well, how about a... another Arden Vale Fealty? Um, play the land. Is this Hornlock Whale on the... Okay, Knockout Blow. All right, well, we're gonna play a Virtual Loyalty. Not doing anything yet. But in the future, it will hopefully do a lot. Opponent, tap land. Let's play the... Okay, let's do it this way. Play the land. Invasion of Gabacon. Get a peek at what our opponent's doing over there. Farewell, Sunset Revelry. Well, we'll just take the farewell. Fire up the Bivouac. Actually, we can fire it up this way. We're not going to attack with it because of the Horn Lock Whale. Oh, we still lost a life. <laughs> Not gonna attack with it, but we still get a free counter on it. Passing. Oh, we gotta go for it. Chandra? Oh, resolves. That's huge. Take up Chandra for mana. Oh, this is this is really big, because we drew the Reckless Impulse, and now we get to double Reckless Impulse. Draw four. And there's a bunch more card draw. Let's play the Copper Line Gorge past the turn and uh things are looking up things are looking up opponent <laughs> cheaty land tranquil cove gains a life well let's do fun things monastery swift spear and land and reckless impulse double it up with chandra and ren's resolve okay so we actually have a, a new hand in exile Wedding announcement, maybe? Let's go with that. Pump the dork and then take up Chandra for mana? And <laughs> virtual loyalty? Attack the Gabacon? If our opponent wants to whale it, that's fine. Like, go for it. Sure, whale. And you know what? We'll just keep it. <laughs> it's only one mana. We make a dork. We start getting counters. The farewell costs eight. Our opponent can get Sunset Revelry value now and make some tutus. Or Sunfall value. Well, uh, Monastery Swift Spear. Ren's Resolve. Double Trouble. <laughs> Are we going to mill ourselves out with a Naya deck? <laughs> oh, there's a Pia. There's a Pia. That's what we were looking for. Uh, Pia. And land. And make a Thopter. And Mishra's Research Desk. And make a Thopter and Nahiri's Warcrafting the Gabicon and make a Thopter and we will decline, flip it, cast it, hit ya. Are we gonna lose this questing druid? I think so, right? Maybe. Yeah, let's just take up Chandra. This is until the end of your next turn. All right, let's research desk. I don't think we're gonna play the Questing Druid. I've lost track of how much we've actually <laughs> exiled this turn, how much we exiled last turn. We'll take a Swift Spear. Pass the turn. Draw a card. Double grow. Oh, we did, okay, we did lose the Questing Druid. Yeah, I guess we should have played it then. Bone it, another Wrath. Vanquish the Horde. Well, uh, Gabacon. How about a little Gabacon? <laughs> Fizzle it Own your wrath That's it I mean Don't have an exile wrath No exile wrath No chance And We just Absolutely Stomped Stomped Blue white control This deck is so sweet Our opponent's just playing Good clean fair Counter your thing Magic And we I mean we drew half of our deck Our opponent has 5 lands We have 27 cards left in our deck Our opponent has 45 We drew 18 more cards than our opponent. Impulse drew, but still, 18 more cards than our opponent. When you're seeing that many cards, it is really, really hard to lose. And then Pia is like an absurd payoff. Like, Pia comes down, it's not a great two drop. It's okay, but like in the late game, like you see here, Pia comes down and just adds like 12 power to the battlefield for free, because we're casting our spells anyway. It's ridiculous, but uh, yeah, nine tokens. <laughs> sweet, sweet.
So what did we learn this week about Naya Pia Nilar tokens in Standard? And overall, the deck is kind of crushing it. So we went four and one in our video matches. I've been playing the deck for fun too. And overall, I'm nine and four with the deck, giving us a 69% win percentage, which I guess means the deck is nice at least. But really, the deck feels kind of insane. It crushes the shielder decks, which is pretty hilarious. If you just want to beat all these black base mid range decks, this deck just absolutely dumps on them. So so the trick is, if you look at like the black mid-range decks, the idea of those decks, and I mentioned in the video a little bit, but they're essentially just playing like all the best mid-range threats, all the best, most efficient one for one removal. Our deck just doesn't really care about that because we're built around all these cards that are two for ones. Like all of our reckless impulses are drawing us two cards for two mana. P is making a ton of tokens. Wedding announcements making a ton of tokens. Virtue of loyalty is a token and then a payoff. So we have all these cards that are putting multiple cards on the battlefield. And this just lets us greatly outpace the older decks like we just don't care about all your one for one removal because we're putting so many bodies on the battlefield so i think this deck actually just lines up really well with a lot of the best decks in the meta i, I think the most challenging matchups are actually aggro decks i heard where we can get beat because against aggro all of our reckless impulse effects can be kind of slow i mentioned this before in the intro but pnlr it's a two drop that we kind of don't want to play on turn two like you can run it out on turn two but then there's a decent chance it's just going to get cut down or go for the throw before it does anything, it's really much better if we can play it later in the game. The same is true of Questing Druid. It's technically a true drop, but usually we want to try to seek the bees first to draw some cards, play it later when we can grow it. So we have all these cheap cards that are actually better in the late game. So against aggro, we do sometimes just get run over, but against all the mid-range decks, the control deck, this deck is hilariously effective. And most importantly, it is just super fun to play. It is wild to me that this deck draws so many cards. Like go back and look at our game. Games. We were ending our games with like 15 cards in our deck. We were outdrawing our opponent by like 20 plus cards during the course of a game, which means we just always have something to do, which makes it super, super fun to play. Not only is it fun though, but I think it also is pretty good against the top decks in the meta. So if you're looking for something spicy and different, you like drawing tons of cards, growing big creatures, winning in unique ways, I think Naya Penalar Tokens is actually a super legit option for a new standard format. So anyway, that's Naya Pia Tokens. That's been our deck for today. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you soon.